Okay, so see, I still haven't technically received my diploma in the mail. This is to my university. Please don't take away my diploma after this video. Thank you very much. I, I still need that. Thank you. Hi. I know it's been over two weeks since I uploaded a video and reason being was because I died. But I'm back now. So much has changed since my last video. I am officially done with college. I've graduated. I think I I did that on camera. I can't talk right now. I'm doing hot girl shit. And the hot girl shit in question is graduating college. But still, I'm living it up. I've cut off all my hair with kitchen scissors. I took a much, much needed break. I have never really taken an official break off of YouTube. Reason being is that I feel like if I do, then I will be forgotten about. Because that's kind of how the internet works. Spent a lot of time with family, watched a lot of movies, developed maybe a little obsession with Timothy Chalamet. I know, I'm late. And I just relaxed for like the first time ever. I finally got to just like unclench my butthole, which is very much so needed because it has been clenched really hard for the last three and a half years of my life. Probably more, who am I kidding? Just to rapid fire answer some questions that have been asked of me recently. Yes, I'm back to making videos. Expect videos from me every Thursday and Sunday once again. The Talk Nasty To Me podcast is coming back in a few weeks. I'm not giving you an exact date yet because I'm still getting my life together but it is coming back and I'm excited for it too and on top of that in a few weeks I have another announcement of something that nobody asked for but I think you guys will like a lot so stay tuned it's not merch but stay tuned and of course if you're new here make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty if not you're disgusting also make sure I have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross I will never stop slurring over my words when I say all of that but I hope it's effective. Today, I'm telling stories that I could never tell until I graduated college. You may think you know where I went to college. You may have seen me in real life at my college. We may have had a class together, but for legal reasons, uh, no, you do not. You don't know where I went to college. <laughs> this entire video is a joke. None of these stories are real. They're all made up for legal reasons. To be honest, I don't remember a lot of my college experience. And I think that might be because I only really had one good year of college, which is so depressing because I paid so much money. And to only have one good year, are you kidding? I promised you all that I would share some fun little crazy stories from college that I couldn't really share before, especially roommate stories. Because we know that I just happen to have the luck of having roommates from absolute hell. And if any of my past roommates are watching my videos, thanks for subscribing to my channel. It means a lot to me. <laughs> I feel like we should just get into it. I decided to live in a suite my freshman year of college. So there was four girls, four of us total. I shared my bedroom with my best friend who I'm still best friends with to this day. That was really unnecessary. And then the second bedroom was filled with my two roommates. One of them was amazing. And then one of them I thought was gonna be amazing and then ended up not being so amazing. <laughs> I went in thinking that this roommate was going to be very, very like strict and like weird about us doing things, which I didn't really care that much because I didn't plan on going into college and like going like buck wild crazy or anything. So like if she was uncomfortable with some certain things, I wouldn't think it's that big of a deal. Like she would just, text us before we even moved in like in the summer and she'd be like how do you guys feel about this how do you guys feel about this us thinking that like she's against these things but i didn't realize that she was asking us all these questions to see how we felt because she wanted to to do all of these things in the apartment such as bringing guys over to our apartment very early on but like different ones all the time listen College is an exploratory time. However, I really am uncomfortable when there are strange men in our apartment who a lot of times are much older than us. When I was the ripe age of 17, I did felt very, very like shocking to me. I went from being an only child my house my entire life and now there are grown ass men in my apartment. But then again, I never said anything like against it. You know what I mean? Like it, it's my fault that I didn't stand up for myself, but I literally did not learn how to stand up for myself until about Three months ago, yeah. One of the first instances of a strange man coming to our home, there was like this carnival going on on campus. And me and the YouTuber, Hannah Elise, actually went together. I get a text suddenly from my roommate and she's like, you need to come home now. Keep in mind, she didn't want to go to this carnival. She's like, that's lame. I was like, okay, well, we just joined college. I'm just trying to do the fun college things and make friends. And I got a free t-shirt out of it. So I think it was pretty fun and worth it in my humble opinion. She told us that we should come home soon because her Tinder date was kind of freaking her out. Me and my best friend were like, oh my God, we gotta go home. We gotta rush home. We gotta save our roommate. 
Uh, it turns out she just found him annoying and wanted him to leave. So we were making loud ass noises in the kitchen and we just started cooking. And he was like, oh, well, you know, two's a party, but three's a crowd and four is like a bummer. <laughs> the guy gets kicked out. I was like, all right, whatever. That was kind of funny. Um, until it became like a frequent occurrence. I remember one time specifically, this roommate was high in front of my mom, <laughs> which I didn't really like. My mom was dropping me off from like from winter break and she leaves and this new man comes in and it's a almost 30 year old man who Ubered from New Jersey to a Philadelphia college to see my roommate. My roommate texts us and she's like, I need help. This guy sucks. And the only logical thing that I thought to do was to pretend to throw up in the bathroom. Incredible. One of the worst performances of my career and they never doubted it for a second. She could come save me and then she would tell the guy that he had to leave, to which then he said, can't I crash on your couch? And she's like, no, you have to go. As to which then he was like, but I, I Ubered from New Jersey. And then she was like, no, 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 you still have to go. You had to force him out of our apartment and I had to continuously pretend that I was puking. And that's when I told her that was the last time I was doing that, but it was really not the last time that I was doing that. She sucked for quite a few reasons. One of which being is that she would kind of ruin all of my uh, pots and pans and utensils and such. If there's anything that I've learned in my time with roommates is probably don't share your kitchen stuff a lot of the time unless you really trust this person. If anyone knows anything about cooking, you don't wash a hot pan like a really scorching hot pan. My roommate would wash my scorching hot pan because she liked the sound of it sizzling with the water. <laughs> That's just, she told me that. I was like, you're not supposed to do that. My pan is bent. My pan is absolutely bent. So my brand new pan that I got that year that's supposed to last years, it lasted a total of two semesters. I remember that this was really towards the, like, the peak of our downfall of our friendship um, is when one time my roommate decided to drop acid with two really, really large football players, which may or may not be now in the NFL. <laughs> People do a lot more drugs in college than I anticipated. Like when I found out that one of my neighbors did coke, I was like, coke, coke, where do you fucking get coke from? So I remember the next day she had her whole acid trip with these uh, nice good old men telling me all about the story and everything. And, and I decided to finally stand up for myself and I was like shaking and I was like, hey, just letting you know, I'm so happy that you had a great time, but you should really consider next time that you have like three roommates who are not comfortable with you doing stuff like that, uh, especially without us knowing, especially when the guys were making one of our roommates really uncomfortable. Um, you probably should reconsider dropping acid next time with us here. And she just started crying, and then, then, then our friendship just kind of like stopped. Oh, wait. I just remember this one time when she started dating this one guy and she was an atheist prior to this, but she became a Christian because of him uh, like a few days after meeting him. Wait, that's fine. That's totally fine. Was I expecting to walk in through the door and her sitting on his lap and they're reading Bible scriptures to each other? Not exactly. Cute, whatever. I remember I like cleaned the entire apartment like spotless because I had friends coming to visit and I woke up the next morning and then the sink was just filled to the brim with like dirty water and like food floating and everything. And I was just so upset because I just cleaned and I texted her about it and she's like, I'm so sorry, Nicole. I just had something really crazy happen to me last night and I just had to quickly go to bed. And I was like, oh, it's fine, like, what happened? And she was like, well, blah, blah, blah told me that he loves me and I just had to go to bed. So because he said, I love you, she couldn't clean the sink. Anyway, the excuse of the century. And then it was like literally a week before I was moving home. It was like my finals week, but I, I had a lot of shit at this apartment. And so I had to make like several trips home. So I started packing like a week or two beforehand. And I realized that a lot of my Tupperware containers and a lot of like my pots and pans were really dirty because she just would use them and not clean them. Anyway, I just sent her a picture of like some of the dirty things. And I was like, hey, just letting you know, next time if you could just wash them, a little bit better. I would really appreciate it. It would really help me out. Anyway, so I packed away a lot of my things since I was moving out in the next few weeks. The next day, my roommates leave for class. I'm baking my under eyes. She comes in and she's like, hey, Nicole, next time you have a problem with me, don't text me. Say it to my face. I was like, what? <laughs> and she said to me, I just wanted to let you know that you sent me those texts yesterday. It really ruined my day. And I'm like, okay, well, it really ruined my day when I saw that all of my stuff was dirty and I had to rewash everything. Also, I noticed that you packed away all of your Tupperware containers. 
I get the message, I'll be getting my own shit. And I was like, okay, I'm literally packing my stuff away because I'm moving out in a few weeks. So anyway, that was a very weird and passive aggressive time in my life. And then I moved out and then she apologized a few months later via Twitter DMs and I never responded and I never saw her again. And then my sophomore year, I became an RA and I lived alone and it was the best year of college ever. And I loved it so, so, so much. And I decided that I'm never gonna have a roommate again after college. Then my junior year, I was supposed to be an RA and live alone again, but then the university ran out of housing for the RA, so they had to place them all together. And that's when I also got paired with one of the worst roommates ever, if not worse than the previous one. When I tell you other RAs were warning us and they were like, Nicole, you are gonna have a really tough time living with this roommate. One girl quite literally said, if they're, well, I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> It might be illegal. This girl, unfortunately, did not like me right off the bat because I had a bedroom that had its own bathroom and a window and it was randomly assigned. Okay, it was three of us for an apartment. Somehow it was legal for them to give her a bedroom without windows facing outside. They were just windows facing towards the kitchen pretty much. I agree, that really does suck and they really shouldn't have done that. But she showed me from the very beginning that she did not like the fact that I was living in this room. She told me that it was unfair, it should be by seniority, even though we were RAs for the same amount of time. <laughs> she even texted us in the summer and asked if we were smokers or stoners at all, because since she didn't have a window, she wanted to know if we were comfortable with her smoking out of our windows, as to which I said no, because we were fucking RAs and I wasn't gonna lose my job over this girl that I didn't even know. <laughs> I am a 420 friendly kind of gal. I personally don't smoke. I have severe anxiety, but I also would not like to lose my job. It's not fair the RA dynamic where we're taught that we have to bust residents and students for smoking weed inside of the building, yet RAs do it themselves. It is wrong. I had my suspicions, but me and my other roommate were just like, let's give her the benefit of the doubt. She could be a really awesome girl. We could just have some really bad preconceived judgments of her. Well, very first night that we move in, I smell something, a smelly smell. It's not, it's not the good old Mary Jane. It is um, spray paint. She's spray painting inside of our living room with the windows closed at midnight. I just walk out of my room and I was like, hey, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, just, spray painting. And I'm like, why are you doing that? My asthma was so terrible. The smell lasted in there for a few weeks. I immediately texted my manager because I was so upset and I was like, please help, just please. Help. This girl just didn't get like common sense. Once again, I really want to give her the benefit of the doubt, but it just was not working. So she asked if she could use my kitchen utensils, my pots, pans, that, that whole kind of thing. I made the mistake of saying yes once again. I don't know why I did that. So she would leave her dishes in the sink for like five days, but the kicker was, was that they were, they were my dishes, like they were hers because she did them, but I owned the things. So I asked her, hey, could you please just wash the dishes when you get the chance? I've realized they've been in the sink for like five days. Thank you. And she gets angry at me that I ended the text with thank you because it's like I'm expecting her to do it. That's what she said, that it was like, I already expected her to do it without me asking. I don't know what is wrong with this girl. I, am I begging this girl to wash the dishes that are mine? Honestly, I don't remember all the issues that I had with this girl that we had to bring up at all of our uh, roommate conflict mediation meetings because I blacked them all out. I nicely asked this girl, hey, I think that all of us should just wash our dishes within like the end of the day. Like if we cook in the morning, just clean the pot and pan by the end of the day. She goes, mm, no, I, I have a problem with that because I just don't have time sometimes. They're my things, they're my dishes. <laughs> she wanted 48 hours to wash her dishes. Personally, me, I, I think that's disgusting. We also had a dishwasher, mind you, a brand new dishwasher, because this building was brand fucking new. We were the first people to ever live in the building. Anyway, I just flat out told this girl that she is no longer allowed to use my stuff anymore if she's not gonna clean it. Honestly, it's not even October yet, and we've had many incidences at this point with each other. We were not on good terms anymore. I remember this girl in the very beginning of the semester told me very distinctly as if she really wanted me to know that she keeps knives everywhere. She's like, oh yeah, I keep knives where I do my makeup. I keep knives where I smoke. I keep knives where I sleep. Okay, good for you. But she really did make that apparent when all of a sudden one of our biggest conflicts that we had where we had to get like our bosses involved, all of her knives went missing and they just were not. <laughs> 
in the kitchen anymore. I talked about this on my podcast, but uh, one day I came home from the library doing my little thing and I think it was like maybe like midnight, 1 a.m. I think, and I smell something coming from my pantry, which was like, you know, our shared pantry where her and I shared it, just her and I. And I have a smell, I have a good smelly smell and it's a whole ass rotisserie chicken in the pantry at 1 a.m. I'm a vegan. Now, I know a thing or two about food safety because I worked at Chipotle for four fucking years. I know a whole lot about chicken, I'll tell you that. And you are not supposed to leave meat out for more than two hours. I've not been home all day. I don't know how long this rotisserie chicken is sitting in there. Personally, as a vegan, I try not to be a crazy vegan. So I nicely just take it and I place it onto the counter next to the pantry because it really shouldn't be in the pantry. She's asleep. She texts me in the morning. She goes, don't touch my shit if you didn't pay for it. I was like, hey girl. You put your chicken in the pantry. You're really supposed to put it in the fridge. Like it, it's bad. Like you should probably just throw it away. She's like, I've been doing this for years. Rotting meat and eating it, it sometimes does things to your brain. So clearly I have seen that she has been doing this for years. It, she's made it very apparent. <laughs> anyway, she was really angry that I put her rotisserie chicken outside of the pantry. And we had to have a whole mediation meeting about it, which ended in her moving out, the res life wanting to move me out. I. I quit my job a few months later. It was terrible. Res life didn't treat me so well, didn't take me seriously. Anyway, she was a horrible person and she was very rude to waiters. I let her come to my birthday dinner and she was incredibly rude to the waiter. It was so uncomfortable and I felt like I needed to personally apologize to the guy. It was so bad. We were all so embarrassed. So if anyone's rude to a waiter, that's how you know that they're just a really shitty person. And if they spray paint in the living room and if they put rotisserie chickens in the pantry and if they hide knives in their room. Yeah, that's enough about roommates. <laughs> uh, my freshman year of college, I had this one class and we were in a group project. We got assigned very early on and there was this one dude who was in it. There's like maybe six of us and he just looked like a very young Kurt Cobain. And I would see him like writing in his notebook and he was writing like, it looked like music or maybe poems. After like the third or fourth class, he just never showed up and never came to our group meetings. And we were like, dude, what the heck? So we're like texting him in our group chat. He's not answering. We're like the smallest group in the entire lecture hall, meaning that we had to do even more work since he wasn't there. I'm like pretty sure that we removed him from the group chat. Anyway, throughout the semester, we would just like still make jokes about this guy, which wasn't really funny, but I mean, at the time it kind of was like, just like innocent small jokes, but we're like, where's our dude Kurt? Why isn't he coming to class? Where is Kurt when we need him? We could really use him right now. And then I remember texting in this group chat and being like, oh yeah, I remember he was like writing like songs or like poetry in his book. Like maybe he could be writing one about us right now. Like I would just make like jokes like that. It's the end of the semester. I'm at a coffee shop on campus and I'm sitting outside and I see Kurt walk by and I was like, holy shit, it's like seeing a ghost. It's like seeing like a little dead person. I take a photo of him, I send him to the group chat and I was like, dude, guys, look, Kurt's alive. Like literally Kurt's alive. Within seconds, he responds. And he was like, yep, still alive, bitches. I was like, <gasps> it was literally like A from like Pretty Little Liars. I texted everyone outside of the group chat and I was like, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What did I, oh my God. He probably saw all of the things that I wrote about him in like the poetry. It, I was embarrassed. This is back when I was still private on Instagram. He requests to follow me on Instagram and then he requests to follow me on my Finsta. How did this man find me? It was traumatizing. I literally thought that this man was going to be like out to get me for the rest of my time at college because I like made him angry or something. Anyway, that was the last time that I really heard from him, but I was scared. I was scared. I didn't really party in college. I, I only went to one college party, which was like a gymnastics party and I was only there for a few minutes and it didn't really feel like a party at all. I'm 21 now, I can say it. When I did drink with my friends, we would just go over to our one friend's house and it was like, I don't know, like six of us, 10 at most. It was just a fun time. We just had a good time. And that was like our one like safe way of having fun on the weekends. And so me and my roommate, we would walk back to our dorm and it was freezing cold outside because we would walk home at like 2, 3 a.m. So we had like our hoods on, we have like our scarves, we're like all bundled up and it was a pretty far walk. And I just remember the one day my roommate says, I don't know why I call her my roommate, my bestie, my best friend says to me, hey, Nicole, don't, don't step in that. And I look down and it's a ginormous puddle of blood like outside of our dorm. And it just like sat there crusted for the remainder of the semester. My school would always have like homecoming concerts or things of that nature. 
And then this year, they decide to have a homecoming comedy show. Everyone was so pissed, but I was excited because it was Pete Davidson and the tickets were free. And I was like, oh my God, I need to get free tickets to see Pete Davidson. What? I love comedy shows. I've only ever been to one and it's because I was able to go to Chicago for free because a girl in my high school had a ticket to go to Chicago with one of the clubs there, but then she got caught having sex in the staircase. So they gave the ticket to me. So I got to go to Chicago for completely free and get to go to a comedy show one of the nights. Anyway, I love comedy shows and I love Pete Davidson. I cancel from going to my RA staff meeting. I'm using my one free pass in the semester. Sorry, can't go, have to see Petey. I'm home for the weekend working at Chipotle and it's all over the news that P. Davidson and Ariana Grande call off of their engagement. I was like, no, this can't be real. It was real. P. Davidson's obviously gonna come to campus, right? No, he cancels. Instead, they got another comedian, which was also funny and I regret not going, but of course me being a goody good and wanting to go to my staff meeting, I did not go see the comedian. Anyway, if there's anything I learned, it's that Pete Davidson and Ariana Grande breaking up had a larger effect on me than I could have ever imagined. And additionally, if you have any time off that you can get from work to go do something fun, go do it. Now I regret that I didn't go. I also regret that last year, I didn't go see Tame Impala with my friend Jake because we were like, we have to make bulletin boards. Oh my God. I wish that I went, I wish that I went. I had a coworker when I was in college uh, that would constantly put his feet everywhere, like his bare little toes on things. And I hate feet. I think I am like the opposite of what a foot fetish is. He would put them on the desk, have them like wiggling on things and he would just touch his toes. It would make me physically angry. And, and him and I did not have a good relationship and his and his toes didn't make it any better. And we, we had a phone that we all shared that we would have to pass around and he made the background his toes once and it infuriated me. But it was all okay because he ended up um, actually drinking alcohol with his residents and getting caught. So, and then he got fired. I feel like he should have gotten fired a long time ago for putting his toes all over the desk. But I think the last story that I'll be sharing today is that uh, my coworkers once had a sex bingo. Basically, it was where like all the residents could come and you would do trivia. And I knew that I would be really good at sex bingo. I just had a feeling like it was like, it was like trivia on like sex ed. I was also like a health professions major at the time. I just knew a lot about it. Don't usually win at things. And I just really wanted to win at something so bad. And I didn't think that the one thing would be sex bingo, but it was, I won. I was one of the winners of sex bingo. There was a lot of winners. Okay. I didn't like steal it from anyone else. And I didn't particularly want to win for the prizes. I just wanted to win. The winners got to choose an array of like sex toys. <laughs> and it was so weird to tell my coworker what sex toy I wanted. And additionally, it was even weirder because my boss then had to buy it for us. It just, I hated it. I hated it all. And I don't know how they got away with it. I don't know how that was even allowed. Anyway, my boss bought me a sex toy. I didn't even use it because I looked at it and I was like, my boss bought me this. So I don't know where she is right now literally could still be in Philadelphia for all I know. I don't know where she is. I don't care. I don't ever want to see it again. My boss bought me that. That was all my fun little college stories that I, for some reason, was too afraid to say before, but also I couldn't really say before because if any of the people involved in those stories would see me in real life, I'd get punched in the face. And I didn't really want to get punched in college. I got punched once when I was in middle school and I will not live that down. I got punched in the nose by this one kid. And then he also went to my college and we were in the same college class. And I was like, please, I just want to escape you. I just want to escape you. There was no escaping him. He cyber bullied me on Twitter in high school. Anyway, I probably also share that story a hundred times because I'm still salty about it. And I think it might be the reason why I have a slight bump right here. You can't really tell, but I can tell because I didn't have that back then. But then now I do because I got punched in the face by this one kid. So he should be paying for my nose job. That was all my fun little college stories. I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you had fun listening. I do miss being in college in real life. My last year was spent at home and it had its perks in its own little weird ways. And my roommates are two adults that don't put rotisserie chickens in the pantry, uh, nor do they do acid with NFL players. So I'm kind of winning. Although I do get screamed a lot in Polish. So kind of a lose there. I'm really excited for 2021 content and what's to come for this year. I hope that you guys liked this video. And if you did, you should definitely leave it a thumbs up because it helps me out so much. And also comment any crazy college stories that you have. I want to hear them. They're probably crazier than mine because I don't think I had that 
exciting of a college experience. So please leave them down below because I would love to read them. Also, make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty. If not, you're disgusting. Also, make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross. If you want to follow me on my other social media like Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nicky Nasty. I'm going to go now and block all the people that I talked about in this video from my Instagram so that they don't see it when I post it. But if you did see this by stalking my YouTube channel, thanks for the view. Love you lots. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>